Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the School Manager Part 7. In this training, from scratch, we're going to design this complete teachers, complete with payments, assigned classes, attachments. We're going to show you how to load. I'm going to show you a brand new way of doing data mapping that you are just going to love. We're going to also add a brand new teacher list. We'll complete with single click sort. And also we're going to add a filter onto that. It's going to be a great training. We've got so much to cover. Let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me today. This week on School Manager Part 7, we've got a ton to cover. I'm going to be creating a brand new teacher section. We're going to be able to add, load, save, update, delete teachers and teachers list. We got a lot. And so I just want to make sure to let you know I do bring you these videos and trainings each and every Tuesday. Of course, the workbook that you see here is free. All you need to do is click the link down below using either your email or Facebook Messenger, and we'll get that over to you right away. If you do like these trainings and want to help and support us, there are some great ways to do that. One is by getting the 175 workbook zip pack. That's 175 of my best templates, all for just $66. Another way is to help out some of our product. We've got a lot of partner products back on our website. When you click here, you'll see a bunch of partner products. I put together some of the best partner products that go great with Excel, such as Auto Macro add in Wondershare, Pine BI, some really amazing products. Some things that go great, and I've used them and I just love them. So I put them right here on my site. You can see them right here. Also, if you want to have some partner courses, I've got a bunch of partner courses. You know, I teach a lot of Excel, but there's some great, some courses by Leila Garani and some by uh, different people. And it's just some amazing courses here. So if you need to expand your Excel, you can do that right from my website. That'll help us out as they are affiliates of ours. So that would help us out as well. All right, I want to get right to the training because we've got so much to cover. Like I said, I want to create a brand new teacher section. We click here, teachers, there's nothing here. Well, we need to make sure that changes right away. So let's do that. Well, what I want to do is I want to keep very something very similar to the students. So I'm going to use this same theme, the same idea, and just build on upon that. So why don't we just do this and just copy that straight out. I'm going to copy the entire sheet here by clicking on the upper left and just clicking copy. Then we're gonna go into the teachers tab and I'm just gonna simply paste that right in. Paste it all just as we want it. Now we'll have to change some things. Obviously some things don't always uh, uh, copy and paste perfectly, but we can expand that, the menu and such, things like that, to get that just the way we like it. And uh, so we'll update that. So basically, this is obviously not going to be students. And another great way to do that is just by using, now we can use a, the simple uh, replace tool, find and replace, using the find, control F. Let's say I want to find anywhere where it says students. I can do that on the sheet. And then also I want to replace wherever it says student, student, and then teacher. We don't need that. Teach, and then replace, and then replace all. Okay, it's going to add, the reason it's asking for this is because there are formulas that can send in that's not finding these formulas here, teacher database. Obviously, we're going to focus, fix that up because that teacher database doesn't exist yet. We're going to create it. Why don't we create it right now? I'm going to click on this new here, escape out of here, click on this new and create that. So let's find something, teacher database. There we go. So now that it's created here in the teacher database, we can re delete this sheet. It's not going to ask us for that anymore because it now exists. So we go back into the teacher sheet and continue with our students and then replacing it with teacher. We're going to find that that works just well right now. Okay. And then replace all. Okay. Notice it didn't ask for it and it completed. And now we have teacher database. Obviously it's doesn't exist here, but that's just fine. That's exactly what, what I want. And if there's any students to teachers, we can replace that too. Shouldn't be any left there. Okay, good. We've got that. And also student, again, student, and then change it back to teacher. That's just the abbreviation that we use many times. So we're going to place that all and click OK. So we're good there. We've got everything. And then we'll update the formulas and codes and we'll update that. So I also want to update the icon in here too. We're going to make some changes with that. We're not going to have a picture. There's going to be a lot of changes here. So it's fine. Let's continue on. The first thing I want to do is put in an icon. And I also want to start changing shapes. So let's take a look into the shapes panel. And I'm going to change everything that says student. Obviously, uh, there's not going to be a picture. So I can just delete this. The student ID group itself, that doesn't exist. So I, again, I can just click delete using the delete key and delete it. Clear filter button, we're going to need that. Sample ID field, we're not going to need that. General info group, I may need that, but uh, I'm going to delete it for now and we may use it because 
I'm not going to. General info group was basically used for these pictures here, but we're not going to need that. So I'm going to delete that so I can delete that using this pane here. Show student list button. That we're going to need because I'm going to show teacher list. So we're going to update that. Hide student. We're going to need that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name. Instead of student, I'm going to change it to TA. CH and I'm gonna do the same thing here. This is a quick way to do it and then we're gonna update the sizes accordingly Sizes don't always copy over exactly existing student group. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna need that That's gonna be able to save and update our teachers teachers So then also we're gonna have the new one. Let's take a look at this group eight and we're gonna that's our menu Let's just call it our menu. We can see it selected over here on the left side call that menu It's nice to name everything the way we want it and so once we reduce the menu, what else do we have? We have a new student group. We're going to rename that to new teach group here. So we've got that. And this quick way to create screens here. So it's, once you get the first one done, if you want menu and new teach group. Okay, so I think we've got everything covered here. Let's just take a quick look. So clear filter button. We're going to use that for our, our teacher filters. Show teacher list button. Hide. Okay, we've got everything. Now what we want to do is get those shapes in order. Let's take a look at that. That's looking pretty good. This one is not sized accordingly, so I'm going to format it and then we'll set the height to 0.25 and the width to about 1 there. Student list, let's say 1.3. Okay, that'll cover it. And so what I want to do, basically, we can close this out now. And I want to actually make sure this doesn't look like it's 0.25. I'm going to keep the same height. Oh, it is. Okay, good enough. But we'll update the width. I'm going to change this now. We need, obviously, it's not a student. We're actually, it's a new teacher. So wherever inside the buttons, we need to update that text here. So teacher and as well here in the delete here. And then we're going to expand the entire group here we also have another group that we're going to do so when you only see two dots here what you need to do is zoom in then you can see that then you're allowed to to actually bring that out so there we go that's what i like delete teacher and obviously teacher id here we're going to do something different i'm going to be doing an alpha numeric alpha numeric uh, id now we've done like numeric ids but i've had a lot of requests how do i do a uh, unique alpha numeric id so we're going to do that just for the fun of it and i'm going to show you exactly how we're going to base that on basically let's say the first two letters of the first name the last two letters and then a unique number. So this time we're going to create a unique, I would call it teacher ID. So that ID is going to be alphanumeric. So what I want to do is I also want to keep track in this case of also a, un a unique, we'll call it a teacher number. So we can differentiate. Teacher number is going to be one. So we'll call that number. And I'm going to put that up here. Okay. And we'll call it yellow. Give it that different color. So we have selected tab color. Now that I'm not going to have all the tabs that I have for expenses. So I'm going to change it up a little bit for teachers are probably going to want something like expenses. If teachers have expenses that we need to reimburse them for, and I want to know when teachers are paid. So payments and expenses is probably something helpful for teachers. I want to know in this case, assigned classes, which classes have been assigned to a teacher. So I want a list of all those, whether they're active or not assigned classes. And also attachments is going to be really, really helpful, right? We'll be able to attach contracts and, you know, whatever we want, you know, invoices, whatever. So that's going to be it for the tabs. We may add more in the future if, we, if you give me some really good ideas or something I missed. Of course, I'd like to hear from you, as I always do. So that's really important. And then let's just get rid of this. We've got some conditional formatting here. And I only want to limit that conditional formatting from E to H. So we're going to go in conditional formatting and manage those rules. And instead of J, we're going to make it to H. Okay, then click that apply and click OK. All right, now we'll take a look at it. Now we're just going to update the borders, formatting the cells. Really, I don't want to, I want to none, let's put none, and then I'm going to put a black border on the bottom. That's pretty much it for the borders. Okay, good. So now we've got a nice tab feature. Now we're going to update this. So that's not what I want to do. All right, so now we've got that. The reason that expanded so much is because we have teachers there and we have a large text in those fields. So let's take a look. What else do we want? So I'm going to have a table here. Let's put, let's let's focus on our main section here. Pretty much again, let's say select teacher, enter teacher ID. That's good. I want that assigned classes, first name, last name. Teacher ID is good. Um, also, I want the address and the birth date. That can stay just the way it is. That's fine for that. City, state, zip. Good, good there. And then also instead of let's put in, I want to put in the start time. I want to know what time they start because I need to know that because we can't schedule classes before their start time or after their end time. So let's put their end time in here. So end time and start time are both kind of important. We don't have a colon on any of the other fields, so let's keep that off. All right, what else do I want to know? Let's try their email one. I want to put more than one email. And then maybe their phone one. Phone one. We'll put phone one so they can have more than one phone. And then I'll do email two here. 
and then uh, phone two here. So that way we're tracking both the phone number and the email, multiple people. And obviously we don't have parents and emails. So let's say I want to put maybe something like their hire date. What date were they hired? And uh, a termination date in case we have to terminate them or they quit. Termination, right? This way we can, this is like active or inactive. If the termination date's blank, then we can know. So we may want to know that termination date. And uh, also let's see, I want to know the pay frequency. How often are they going to get paid? Great, so we've got that. Now, that's gonna be it. Let's uh, do this. Let's put it in teacher's notes here. And then also, I'm just gonna make the rest of this note so we can get rid of the rest of this. So something like this, we don't need any of that. So I'm gonna delete all of that. And then make sure we're, I'm just gonna unmerge all these cells. And then I'll, again, I'll have about three or four rows of, of notes. And I'll bring the notes to about like here. I also wanna know the work day. So that's good. I like that the way it is. Let's bring this over here and bring this down here okay good i like that maybe a bit much on the notes maybe that's a bit much oh, let's do this okay i like that that's that'll, that'll cover it that's enough i'm gonna format those cells here and then just put that bottom black border on the bottom there so we can and then i'll, I'll merge instead of them at a later time now so what do i want to have here what i want to have here is i want to know their work schedule when we do the scheduling i want to know what days they're working so i'm going to put something like up here we're going to call this uh, work days. I want to know what days they're working. So work days. And then I'm going to give it that same format that we've been using, right? So we know that we have some cell styles. I'll give it the table title and then I'm going to merge and center this. So I want to be able to select which days they work. And then I'm also going to shrink these, right? We don't, I'm going to bring these, these alternate, these even rows here. We're going to shrink them. We don't need them expanded like this, just like we did on that and then i think we can reduce the t font on teachers notes let's go about to about about six or eight something like that that's too small so let's do about eight something like that eight two five is good and then i'm going to shrink the, this one down and then we don't need that and then i'll put it in the middle so we can sit teachers note that's enough so it gives us an idea because we don't need an, enough there so basically what i want to have here is i want to have monday and then, and then we can bring this down actually, and then just drag them and drop. So I'm gonna have Monday to through Sunday, and then I'm going to just drag this down here. This is gonna be our Sunday. All Sunday is gonna go all the way down here, and then Saturday gonna go down here. So I'll use alternating rows the same way, and I'm gonna also do it here too, so that everything's consistent. So what I want to do is basically I want to have to be able to check which days we're going to be working and which ones are not. It makes it very very easy. And then on the schedule we can use conditional formatting or all sorts of things to do that. So let's let's format those. Let's color let's start with all gray now. And then now we'll format them accordingly. So I'm going to basically be able to use a selection check mark on that so we can select which days are work and which ones are not. So we'll format those cells. It's sorry it's off the screen there. But that's format the cells. I'm just going to put let's say I'll put a border all the way around it and then a dotted line in the inside. Okay, cuz that denotes. Okay, so I like that there. That kind of looks good. Let's format those cells We're putting a border around there so we can clearly identify which ones and we'll do the same thing here and then because this is going to be a user input field check or not check we want to make that white all right i like that there oh we can go as let's go white on that and then off white on here so that looks good so we know exactly which day and then basically what we'll do is if they're not working maybe we'll change the font color a little bit so we can clearly identify this consistency this consistency matters so let's do this to 8.252 so now they're all separated okay let's save our work obviously we always want to save our work whatever we're doing okay let's take a quick look general information expenses assign classes attachments we've got a work dates i'm going to change the font highlight this we're going to use that checkbox wingdings so i'm going to change that font to wingdings so basically what do i want to do through vba of course we're going to insert and then we'll put a symbol and i'm going to put this probably this check mark right here this is character two 52 whoa click on there that's character wingdings 252 so that that uh, when we insert that it's going to be that checkbox and i'm going to center that but we'll do it through vba using that character if we remember that 252 let's remember that because we're going to be using that very soon all right let's update this menu we want this menu consistent exactly what it is on the student so i'm going to click the students i want 18.43 on the columns right so let's do that 18.43 exactly how is where I want it. So that's good. So everything's consistent. And I'm going to bring this down, size it exactly accordingly the way we have it here. Okay, so there we go. Right there. Okay, so also this is not the students, this is the teachers. So we need to 
added an icon there. Let's put in that icon. That's a teacher icon. We're going to use that. I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to bring it down because I'm going to use that same icon for the header here, right here. And I'm also going to use it for the same icon as for the menu. So I'm going to duplicate that using Control D. Then I'll make it smaller. How smaller? Well, I'm not sure. Let's click on the size of this here, this one here, and see what is the size of that. Well, that is 0.23. So we're going to do the same thing here, 0.23 resetting the size here. Okay, so now it's size accordingly. So now what we have is we've got a group, we're calling it menu here. So what I want to do basically is just ungroup this, okay? And then I want to remove this student, so I want to place it with the white one. Well, how do we do that? Well, we can click here and look for the students. That's going to be on the admin. I want to find this white icon here. This white icon, I want to copy that. Control C, and then I'm going to go back into the teachers, and I'm just going to paste that right in here. Paste it here. So there we go. There's the icon that I'm going to use and that's going to be for the students. So take this student button here, color it the background of all the other buttons, which is this one right here. Take the icon here, holding down the control, deleting that icon. The font, of course, is going to go back to white here. So when we click here and we want the font, in this case, let's click the shape one more time, clicking the font and then the, it's not bold. So now what we'll do is we're just going to bring this up here and then place it right here where it belongs with our students. Also, we want to make sure that we've changed the name of that because the name is very important. It's got to be also students because when they click the name, it's got to go the, directly to that page. So students, we've got to make sure that that naming is the same. And if notice that it went directly to that, it's didn't you name it. Why didn't rename rename it? Because we already have a name. So how do we get it? We just click on the shapes here and we go ahead and change it directly from here. Now I'm going to call it students. Okay, we can change it here. Sometimes we can, but if there's already an existing shape, if there's already this shape is already existing, it already has a student name. So it's going to revert to that. So we use it here. We force it through this panel to change the name to the same one. Okay, picture 90. That's okay. That's going to be called teachers, right? That's going to be so I'm going to update that teachers. Good. Okay, so now that we have the teacher, so now what I want to do is simply update the teacher, so which is down here. Again, we're going to do the opposite of what whatever the student was. We're going to take that uh, color here, and you're going to use our color, and we're going to make it bold, and we're going to go into the format, shape fill, and put that white. Now all we're doing is we need to add in the icon here. Okay, good. So now all we need to do is use our selection tool here. If you don't have that, it's in the quick access here. You can find it using this browse, and then just go more commands, search all commands right all commands here and then just look for your selection here selection and then you can find it there okay all right so again the name of it here is select objects sorry select objects the correct name so what i want to do is i want to use that tool and i'm going to select all the objects and i'm going to group them again and i'm going to call them menu and one more thing i want to do very importantly is i want to make sure that we're sizing and not moving but not sizing to do that right click size and properties going into here properties move but don't size anytime you regroup it's going to get changed right i want to i don't want that to size although theoretically we could you know if we reduce this we could but we want to keep a consistent size okay again now what i want to do is i want to assign a macro notice i've got macros assigned to this but not to this i've got macros assigned to this but and this but i want to make sure that macro gets assigned to this so how do we do that well let's take a look at the macro that's been assigned assigned macro it is the same macro that's been assigned so this is it menu go to sheet i'm going to copy that and I'm going to, just to be sure, I'm going to, I'm going to click on the entire group. Let's go back there. I'm going to click on the entire group without selecting the macro. And then I'm going to right click. I'm going to assign a macro to the entire group. What that does is it actually assigns macros to each individual shape within the group. So now when I click on teachers, nothing, which is good. Nothing happens. Students, teachers. Okay, good. Now we've got our menu set. That looks really nice. And we can continue on with building out the teachers. All right, what else? Well, in the, let's take a look. We're missing the header, so let's pull this header, and I like to have this header the same in every screen. So I'm just going to copy this, go to Teachers, and paste that in here, and just bring it up here right around the center. So we've got the school manager. Everything looks good. Okay, let's update some of the button names. Obviously, this is not going to student list. We're going to call this a teacher list. And along with the teacher list, I've also got we got to update the information here. It's not going to be uh, teacher fees and payments, obviously the name change. We want to call this expenses and payments. So we'll call this expenses and payments. Because I'd like to know when we have a teacher, we assign a specific expense to a teacher, 
or we assign a specific income to teacher. I want to track that and I want to know that. So we have a type, right? We can have income, expense. Maybe we'll assign different types. A date, amount is correct. Term is not, right? If we want to assign a specific class to an expense, like let's say the teacher buys some books for a specific class and needs to be reimbursed, we may want to assign a specific class to an expense. So that could be very, very helpful. And then notes. We may add some more features as we build out the expenses payment. So we'll keep this open. We can always just uh, merge and center this and use all this for notes, which would be more than fine. Okay. Okay, also, what else do I want to know? I want to know the assigned classes, not in this case, not enrolled classes, but the assigned classes, which classes have been assigned to a specific teacher. So we're going to pull that assigned classes. And then I also want to know when we created that, probably something like a created on date or let's say assigned on, we'll call this assigned on. When was the class assigned to them? Class name is fine. Teacher, obviously, we know the teacher. So I want to know the number of enrolled students. How many students have enrolled? So let's put that in there. Student. Okay, we're going to abbreviate that. I think we're running out of time. And then also, what is the status? Is it uh, is it completed on? Has it been completed? Completed on is fine, actually. We can do when the class was completed, maybe the class. And uh, those those classes that are not complete would just be left open. Status, we know on status of the class. And also probably notes. Again, notes. We'll keep that in notes. And then again, we, we might expand this. We may add to that. So we'll keep that open. Uh, obviously. And then next up, we may want to, That's pretty much it. There's no exams. There's no ID or nothing. anything else. Let's uh, unhide this here. We have some hidden rows here. I'm going to unhide this here. Unhide 96. So, okay. So let's take a look. Exams. We don't have ID cards. So we can get rid of all that. We don't, we will have attachments. So I want to keep that. So I'm just going to delete whatever's here. I'm going to unmerge the cells, whatever's here. And I'm just going to take whatever's in the attachments here. I'm going to drag that all the way up here, bring that. We may have to unmerge and center that if it doesn't quite fit there. So I want to attachments to go right here in 100. Okay, so that's good. Everything else, we're good. We don't need anything else. Let's make sure we have the way, just the way we want it. Actually, we don't, since we don't need exams, we can just unmerge this and then just basically replace attachments with that because we're only going to have really three sections here. So that's all we need up here, four sections here. We want to replace it. Yes, good. We're good to go there. Everything else is clear so we can clear everything else out and we don't need anything else. We're going to, I'm going to go all the way down here just to clear everything else out and then we'll just clear that all. Actually, I'm, when we do that, it kind of tends to add to the memory. So I don't want to go to the last line. I want to go to the first available row, which is 3114, 3145. That's the one I want. I want to clear that out for now. We will add teacher's names to that shortly. So we're going to just delete that. Whatever's there, delete it because we will add autocomplete for teacher's names. Okay, so that's good for now. We can just color this, give it our standard color for now. Good enough, good enough. It'll be all hidden eventually, so nobody's going to see that. Okay, all right, good. So we've got a tab. Why don't we set up our tabs so we don't have to move around so much? I'm going to set up the tabs, and I want to put in a teacher's list. This is where our teacher's list is going to be located here. And we're going to use this same icon. So if we're going to use the same icon, this specifically one, we don't want to move or size. So let's move this size and properties here. Properties here, I want to don't move or size with the cells because I want this icon also to be used for the teacher list so that it stays right where it is. Teacher list here, we can get rid of that capitals on that or capitalize it all either way. I think we capitalize in the students. This is going to be our teacher's list. And we'll keep that in mind. We'll update that. And it's already merged and centered. So our teacher's list is going to be shown. Let's get these buttons active. And so we can start using them. Write some macros so that we can use the tabs and that. So let's get into that right now. All right, Alt F11 will give us into the VBA. That's a quick way to go. We're gonna, we have some modules here. We're gonna be adding more. We wanna add, since we have, we don't need to worry about it, but we need teacher tabs, we need teacher list macros, and we need teacher miscellaneous. So let's write that in right now. We're gonna insert those three modules doing here and then we're going to call this we want to name them we're going to get, click the properties here f4 will get us there okay so we're going to call this again you can just basically follow everything we've done on the students so teacher we'll call this teacher tabs keeping everything as consistent as possible that's going to save us a lot of time and you'll see why okay i'm going to put a insert another module and we're going to call this teacher list macro so we're going to change that name right here teacher and then underscore list macros we're going to be doing something similar for expenses, although it's slightly different, but uh, we're going to be creating those modules here. And also another one, insert another module. In this case, we want to focus on the teacher miscellaneous. So teacher miscellaneous. Okay, so now we have the three that we have similar teacher and then miscellaneous. That's where we're going to be putting all our add new. So let's start out with the tabs, right? The tabs are going to be very, very similar to students. So why don't we just do that? I'm going to do control A, control C to copy all. 
And I'm going to copy and paste that directly inside the teacher tabs here. Teacher tabs. And then control A, paste it in there. I want I did control A because I don't want two option explicit to come up. Otherwise, I want. Okay, but the first thing we want to do is obviously we, this is all focused on students. So the first thing we want to do is start from longest to shortest, start replacing names. So we're going to use control F. What that's going to do is going to bring up my specific find here. I'm going to drag it up here and I'm going to look for the longest. Any instance of students, the word students, I'm going to replace with teachers and I'm going to make sure, make 100% sure, current module, we don't want the whole project, that'll mess things up. And I have done it. I've made a mistake where I've clicked on the control project, right, the current, and I've done it. Just do control Z. It'll undo any changes. Control Z so you don't have to worry about that. If you do make that mistake, I've made it before. Current module, okay, so what we want to do is we want to replace it. So everything from students all the way to teachers, so teachers, that's the longest word, and then replace all if there's any instances. Okay, there's 12 replacements of that. And now I want to go student to teacher. So now any instance of student, I want to replace with teacher. Again, re within the current module, replace all. Two of that. Okay, next up, going again from longest to shortest. The shortest one now, S-T-U-D. Some of our variables contain that. All the way to T-E-A-C-H. So H, being consistent is helpful. Replacing all. Okay, 13 of those. Okay, so now what we want to do is basically we've got a good framework, but obviously we can't run these macros yet because we really haven't uh, really checked them. We still need to go through all the macros and make sure because there are differences along that and some big differences so we're going to go in so the teacher tab hide all we can keep that id group again we don't need that shadow format i didn't even see that mistake that should be shape okay mm. we better fix that right now that is not correct student tabs no not good i don't think we use it do we use it if we use it that should not be this should be sometimes when i type student id group as shape okay make sure we've got that shape not correct if it's shadow format okay so but we don't need it for teachers tab okay I'm surprised Keith didn't tell me on that one. He catches everything. Come on, Keith. What's going on? All right. So on air, we, teacher pick, we're not going to have a picture. We won't have ID card, so we can get rid of that. We won't have a teacher ID group. We don't need that. We can get rid of that. We don't need this ID group. We won't. We don't have a general information, so we may add it. We may add it some more shapes, but keep that in mind. So we don't. And also with the ID group, so pretty much all we really need to do is teachers and then just hide it we really don't need to use even with teachers if we're just single echo so all we're doing is hiding those shapes right but we'll keep it with teachers why are we going to keep it? because i may add like for example when we add attachments in i'm going to need buttons that go for attachments those buttons are going to need to be hidden right add new attachment save attachment right those buttons so those when we hide those buttons they're going to go in here right so i'll keep this with teachers and then we'll eventually hide it so let's update the row so for now it's okay we want to make sure that our name of the sheet is called Called teachers right we want to make sure that that's correct and that is the uh, sheet name here so code name here it has to be teachers so that's correct both are teachers keeping it consistent so that's fine for now but we'll be adding in so continuing on so but not 7 through 43 7 is correct 143 is incorrect we got less rows here it's going to go all the way to we can just go to let's say 98 that's going to cover it so we don't have as many as we had on students so we can change this to 98. okay so now the general info that's the first tab we're going to come to that of course we're going to keep it we're going to keep that obviously from let's say seven all the way we want to keep that all the way to 23 that should be sufficient there so seven through 23 we want to display that hidden equals false we want to show the general info again we don't have any of these pictures or groups so we can get rid of those again we'll, we will however you know add shapes to that so we're going to keep the width teacher fees okay we're going to call this i'm going to change the name of this right it's actually expenses and payments that it's a little bit more consistent so we're going to change the name of this called it expenses and payments and and the rows that we're going to be showing are going to be 30 which is correct all the way through 51 or 52 either one is okay so 30 through 51 that's going to be sufficient so we've got the expenses and payments and then also the classes right we can keep that assigned classes that's fine the name is sufficient 53 all the way through 74 we want to display that that's good just the way it is all right exams we don't have so we can get rid of that and then the id we don't have we can get rid of that here so we can hold the shift down and delete that and we do have attachments but we do need to update the rows accordingly so the attachments are 76 all the way through let's say 98 so we can update that 76 through 98. 
Good. So that was much easier. See how we've just all we don't have to retype a lot of code. We're keeping it consistent. Now what we need to do is to get this functioning. We need to add a selection change code inside our teacher sheet. Well, we have something very similar inside our student sheet. So why don't we use that and then copy it over and make changes accordingly? Students here, we're focused on the selection change. We're focused on that tab menu. This is the one we're focused on right here. So why don't we just copy this here? and then paste it inside the student and then make the updates inside the teachers. Now we're focused on worksheet and then selection change. So we're going to paste it right in here. Now E5 through J5 isn't quite accurate, right? Because we only focused on four tabs in this case. So it's going to be all the way through H5. So we can change that to update that to H5. Screen updating, we're going to turn off. We're going to the teacher tab again. We can do this again, control F. Now we're going to base change based on the highlighted text. So again, we select the text. We're going to make a change. Anywhere we see STUD, we're going to replace it with TEAC. So again, replace and then teach. Okay, then but it's only the selected text. Replace all. Click OK. All right, good. So let's take a look at that. That's pretty good. And then we'll just double check. Teacher tab, hide all. I think that's correct. If you're not sure, you don't know if the macro's name, just change this to lowercase. And if it turns back to uppercase, you know you've got the right one. Set teacher tab, general info. Again, just to double check, turn it to lowercase. If it changes, good. Fees, we know we changed this already, right? So we know that I like to use lowercase expenses. And then PMNTS, I think that's correct. If it changes to uppercase, then it's correct. Good. And then we'll just call this expenses. And then classes, that that we we kept the same, just to check. Class, not cast. I messed that up last time. Huh? I got to check on that. That's interesting. Um, okay, so attachments, exams, and ID we don't use, so we're going to call that. And we're going to change this to 8, right? If the column's 8, then it's going to be attachments. Again, changing that to lower, making sure that ensures B5 is going to target column, F3 is our selected. That's good. We can keep that in screen updating. Okay, saving our work, double checking, and now we're going to check general info, expenses and payments. That looks good. This, we will fix that because that's, that's our part of our list. We don't need that, you know. We're going to be hiding those columns. As soon as we do the list, that's okay. Assign classes, taking a look at that. That looks good. And attachments here. Good, everything looks good on the tabs. Let's focus on this teacher list right now. All right, while we're on the selection change, I'd like to get this functioning where we select something here and it gives a check mark. So how are we gonna do that? Well, I also wanna add some conditional formatting. If a day is not selected, what I'd like to do is I would like to gray it out. So I'm gonna hold down, the, highlight those and go into the conditional formatting. I'm gonna add a new rule. It's gonna be based on that check mark. So what I'm going to do is use equals and then if this L9, does not equal empty. Of course, it's not only L9, it's gonna be for every row that within our range. So I'm gonna get rid of the absolute dollar sign there. I'm gonna format that. I'm gonna change the text. In this case, we're gonna change the font. I'm gonna use a just a gray color. So that's kind of grayed out a little bit for days that, and it's does not equal empty. Actually, it's gonna be equals empty. Sorry, equals empty. For those that are equals empty, if it does not equal empty, I wanna show it. Click OK. Okay, so that's what I want. So as I check here, I want those days to be shown up, displayed. So let's write some selection code code change though so that when we select it it's going to do that so let's go into back into the worksheet selection change and we're going to write some code right here so i'm going to write if not now it's going to automate based on based on auto hotkey i've got a video on that to help you show you that auto hotkey that automates my typing so let's add some information here so we can do so what range are we going to be selecting well pretty much anything from l Let's see L9 through L21. Don't worry about that. L9 through L21. So let's write in that L9 through L21, but not on every single column is nothing. Not every single row, only some rows. Which rows? Only the odd rows, 9, 11, 13, 15, right? So only the odd rows. How do we ensure that it's an odd row? Well, we can use the mod function for that. And we'll go and the target dot row mod, right? Two, the mod of two, what is the mod of two is equal to one, right? Odd, if it's an even row, of course, that's going to be zero. But I also wanna make sure that B3 is false. In other words, when it's loading up, I don't want anything to happen, right, when it's loading. So I wanna make sure, if we remember correctly, on just on our students, when B3 goes to, oh, don't worry about that. When B3 goes to true, it's loading. So I wanna make sure B3 is false. So that's the other one. So, and range B3, dot value equals false then 
what do we want to do? Well, then what I want to do, I want to basically know if we've selected something here. Here's the check marks here, which is some samples. If we selected something here, then I'll something that I want to clear it. If there's nothing there, I want to add in the check mark. Okay, so how do we do that? All right, so we could do that with just a little bit of code. If the target dot value equals empty, then what I want to do, target dot value equals character. Remember that character? 252. Otherwise, else, clear it out. Target dot clear contents. Okay, great. I want to add one more line of code. Now it works just fine when we click here. Let's reset the code. I forgot to do that. Let's reset the code. We're in break. And now if we select that, okay, great. But I want to select it multiple times. How can I do that? Well, if I select something else inside the code, then it'll work just fine. So why don't we do that using F3? So we'll add in that. So range F3 dot select. Okay, so now when we add that in here, we can select a single cell multiple times, just like this. Okay, great, that's working, but I want to add in some conditional formatting. All right, conditional formatting's done, it's working good. We may want to add in additional conditional formatting, but I think that's sufficient. Now, okay, very good. So what else do we want? I want to get this student teacher list done. Right now, it's going to, if I click, it's going to go to the student list. We don't want that. I want to activate this student list. So what I want to do, basically, is this teacher list here, I should say. Teacher list, I want to display that teacher list. So the best way to do that, since we're remaining consistent, is simply copy over the existing list that we have inside the student. So I'm going to create a brand new module. We have one called student list macros. Let's create another one called teacher list macros. So I'm going to insert a module and then we're going to give it a name and the properties and we're going to call this teacher list macros, teacher list macros. And then inside that basically it's going to be very similar to what we have already created inside the student list macro. So all we need to do inside the student list, control A, copy that, control C, go into this teacher list macros, control A, and then paste that in there. Okay, now we're gonna use our find and replace tool to change all the values inside that. So we wanna make sure that we're on the current module, nothing else, inside the teacher list module. And then we're gonna make some changes. We're gonna start with the longest to the shortest, longest text, which would be, in this case, students. All right, we're going to look for that students inside this module. We're going to place any instance of students with the word teachers. And then we're placing all. Okay, we've got eight instances of that. Next, we're going to go to the shorter one. In this case, it's going to be student. I'm going to replace that with any instance of teacher. So we're going to replace all. Okay, 19 of those. And then the last one, which is going to be used in some of the variables called student, we're going to replace that with teach. So again, replacing it all. And we've placed 12 instances of that. Okay, now all we need to do is go through the macros. We're not quite ready to run those yet. We need to go through the individual macros and uh, update them accordingly. So we can close this out. We'll bring this down here. And we can look through the te teacher list show. And uh, we'll check. Okay, three. we haven't made any changes to these kind of rows. Three through 20, 22, we want to hide those. So we're just going to basically hide this all the way here, which is correct. That's what we want to do. And I also want to hide the columns here. So the columns and the rows are essentially the same, so we can keep them the same. We may add additional columns to here. I think the teachers database is going to be a little bit more because of those days, so we may add on to this. We want to make sure that our shapes are exact, right? We have in our shapes, so let's go ahead and check on our shapes. We've got here show teacher list button, high teacher list button, existing teacher group, new teacher group. So we can make sure that we've got those correct. So inside our code we do have existing teacher group we're going to make that invisible and we're also hiding the teacher group general info group we don't have that for teachers so we can go ahead and erase that also the high teacher list and show teacher those are correct we want those and the clear fill button that name didn't change it's fine also we don't have a teacher picture so we can get rid of that and also n25 select that's good okay i like that we're going to save our work Next up, the teacher list hide. Now we're hiding this. Again, the columns and the rows are pretty much the same or fine. We may add a little bit to that. General info group, we don't have that. Teacher list and show list buttons are correct. If B7 is empty, I want to know what is B7. Well, I want to know is, is this an existing record or not? What do we, we need to put that? So if B7 is empty, then we don't have a specific row. We have, we're going to update this row here. It's going to be based on, actually, why don't we do it right now? It's going to be based on this teacher number here. So that's what we're going to do. So if it's blank, then we know it's going to be new. If it's in the, it has an existing row, then we know it's existing. So we need to know which group of shapes do we show the existing 
existing teacher group or do we show the new group? And it's going to be based on this because if there's no row associated with that, we know it's a brand new teacher. So we can get that screen. We can get this button set ready. Which button set do we want to show based on a new or existing? So that's all we have to do. It's going to be based on B7. B7, so it's exactly like it was for the students. If it's empty, of course, then we're going to show. And I'm going to put this, put this in new teachers. Show existing teacher. So if it's not, sorry, not equal empty, it should be existing. So it's not empty, existing teacher. And this would be a new teacher. Okay, so let's see, new teacher. Just notate that. Okay, that because that way we're the existing we're going to display and the new we're going to hide. Whereas in this case, the existing we're going to hide and the new we're going to show. Okay, that's good. Again, teacher pick we don't have. Clear filter button exists the way it is. And all right, good, go. Okay, so now all we need to do is just assign the uh, macros according to this. So I'm going to right click this, click assign macro. In this case, we're going to go teacher list. On this case, we're going to look for teacher list show. That's the one we want to hide. That's the one we want to set assign that to the button so now we're going to click it saving our work again always before running macros click in teacher list it's going to show that looks good we just have to update that clear filter that shape got stretched out beyond belief so we'll change that to about one and then also this one also did two so we're going to change that format that to about one to start out that does happen no problem there we're going to set them both to about 0.25 in height and that looks good back to this one clear filter is good back to we need to update this and again notice we only have two buttons we can't adjust the width but if we zoom into it we're going to get that third middle button here so now we can adjust it accordingly and again it's not students in here we're focused on teachers so back to teachers Okay, I like that the icon was placed well. Remember, this particular icon did not move or size with the cells, right? So that's why we're using the same icon to show both of those. Okay, now back to teachers. We need to assign this macro to the update. That click assign macro again. Teacher list in this case hide. Click OK and then click hide. Okay, good. So I like that. Let's see how we're doing. All right, now this is of course the new group. This is called the new teacher group, but we need to update that and it's gonna be save teacher. So we do need to update the text on that button, save teacher. All right, that was the cancel new is just fine. Very good. Okay, again, as I mentioned before, I want this teacher ID to be located here. This particular ID that's gonna be located here, we're gonna call this the teacher number and this is the teacher ID. Let's get focused on the database so that we can start creating something. I wanna shrink this up. It doesn't need to be this big and move this icon a bit later. Okay, I like that. Let's continue on and create that teacher database so here we've got a teacher database I've created it already here just a sheet create teacher database but we have to update and we have to add some data mapping to this all right so what fields are we gonna put in here well the best way we're gonna use data mapping or in fact we're gonna even use a brand new uh, idea on data mapping is gonna save a little bit of time I'll show you that a little bit later on but so the best way to do that just as we do with the students we're gonna take a little picture of the students along with the rows and columns that's gonna help us out to quickly uh, easily add data mapping to this so what I'm gonna use I'm gonna use my tool snagit editor I'm gonna use a shortcut key that's gonna take a picture of this and then so I'm just going to grab these columns and the rows and all the fields accordingly and I'm just going to copy them right here. Good. So now I've got that inside my I'm going to copy it from my Snagit editor. I'm going to go down here into the teacher database. I'm going to place this picture temporarily here. That's going to help me add them all. So the first thing what I want to do is I know located here inside my student, I want to add that teacher number, teacher number, I don't want to get confused, and teacher ID. They're going to be different because so many people ask me how do I create an alphanumeric ID? So we're going to do that, treating that so we're going to call it teacher number and then teacher id so we've got that okay then of course the first name we want to have that we need the last name and then we need a birth the address we'll go with address after that then the birth date date and then we'll put in the city we'll put in the state and then we'll put in the zip after that then we'll put in the start time and then after that we'll just put in the end start Time. And then we'll put in the end time. And then after that, we can put in, of course, email one and email two. Email one, let's call this one, and email two. And then I'm going to put the phone one and the phone number two next. Phone one and then the phone two next. Okay, so after that, we're going to put in the higher date, the termination date, higher date. And then we'll put in the termination, we'll abbreviate that date. And then we want the frequency, we'll put in pay frequency, also abbreviate that. And then lastly, the notes. Okay, but not last, actually. Then we need the days of the week. So I'm just going to put in the days of the week here, and we can bring money. That's, I know what I'm thinking. Okay. All right, continue on. So Monday we have here, and then I'm going to 
bring that out just using the drag and drop. Going to go all the way to Sunday. That's the day we want. Okay, so each one of those, we're just going to have that character show up whether we're there. So we want to know the days of the week work. That's going to be it for the teacher database. But I want to map those fields. Basically, what I want to do is I want to map them. Remember, teacher ID, that's going to be in B2. And then we have our ID located here in J. So B2 is the one that's off the screen. So let's update that B2. And then the rest we can use our picture. This is where it's going to come into handy, B2. And then after that, we're going to put in the, the teacher ID. That's going to be located, located right here in J7. J7, first name, we want the first name here. And where that's going to be in F7. And the last name is going to be located in H7. All right, so now the address, of course, is going to be in F9, while the birthday is going to be in J9. Now we've got to add in city, state, and zip all on row 11. So again, F11, we're here under H11, and then, of course, J11 for the zip code. And then the start time would be, of course, in F13, while the end time is going to be in F15. Then we've got the emails to go on, which is going to be H13 and J13. A little bit cumbersome, but it saves us a ton of time coding. Phone, right? Phone's going to be located in, I messed that up, right? J H email 2 is located in H15, H15, while in that column J is going to take J13 and J15 are going to be our phone 1 and phone 2. The higher date is going to be down on row 17, F17. And then we have our H17 here for the termination date, and uh, then J17 for the pay frequency, J17. Okay, and then notes, of course, that's going to be located on E19, E19. Then we just have the days of the week, Monday, Tuesday. So then it's going to be L, again, starting at 16, 18, all in L. L16, then we're going to be L9, L11, L13, L15, L not L5, L15, L17, and I'll double check these just to make sure, L17, and then uh, L, got to move this over so I can see our picture here, L19 and L21 would be the last one, L19, L21, okay, L19, just double checking, L21, okay, let's take a quick look at that to make sure that we got everything right, okay, so we have B2, our teacher number, our teacher ID, let's go ahead and make, I'll center these and just give them a color, nobody will see them, but it's still good to center them, so that we can see gray, and then I like the borders around it, okay, so it makes it a little bit easier to see, we're going to call this the teacher database, Give it a name, J7, F7, F7, F9, J9, F11, H11, J11, F13, F15, H13, H15, J13, J15. Okay, I think we're looking good on that, and if there's any issues, I'll let you know. But teacher database will merge and center that. Um, and then, you know what, I also want to have on the teacher, I want to have a full name, right? Just like we have on the students, full name. And I'll put that actually in the rundown, full name. And I'm going to have a formula up here. I want the full name just like we have the student name. So let's go into the student database here. We're going to add that in here. So we have a full name. I'm going to copy that. So notice that we have that. We have a formula here. I'm going to copy that. It's going to help us. Then we're going to go into the teach name. That's going to be the reason we have a formula is because if the user has set, we don't know which the users are going to set. Do they want to see the last name first or do they want to see the first name last? So this is going to help us, but we need to make a few alterations on this. Right? We're not focused on this F7. We're going to be located on here because our last name is located here and our first name is located here. So let's update that D1. And we'll update the, we also want to make sure we have a student. It's going to be the teacher update, right? Not the student, right? So we want to make sure we've got the right ones. Teacher database, and then not the student, teacher, right? Teacher. Okay, good. Teacher database B1, first name. Okay, let's take a look at that. Okay, so we've got last name and then the first name here. Okay, I think that looks good. So last name, first name, first name, last name. So as we bring this down and we add in, it's going to bring it down automatically. Bring that formula down, it's going to show that. But I also want to, again, just like we did inside the student, we want to add in the full name. What do we do in the students? In the students, we had, we had a criteria when first name is empty, we're not going to show it. And I want the full names, sorted names, full names. So I'm going to copy that and do the same thing, except I'm just going to add that to AD. So I want the sorted names, I want the full name, and I also want to make sure our criteria criteria, I'll add that in here, 
is going to be, does, and it would be the first name. That means if they don't have a first name, why wouldn't they have a first name? Because maybe they've been deleted. So first name does not equal empty. So we're going to set a criteria. So when I run all these full names, I want them in sorted here. But I want to make sure that anybody that doesn't have a first name doesn't get included in there. So that's going to be our criteria. I'm going to set that up here, and then we'll just bring that up and give that a color here in borders. Okay, so good. I like that. So we're criteria because we're going to create that right now. This particular, I want to add in the macros that's going to help us add in. Perfect. So we're going to bring down this form. It's going to create the full name. That full name is going to show first name, last name, or last name, first name, just as we did with the students. It's going to use the same formula. All right, great. Now we're done with this picture. We can remove it. We'll delete it. Our, its purpose has been served. Let's highlight this and just give this a little bit of a color here. I'll bring this down. More formatting. We want to bring it down. Working with formats. And then we'll just give it just a little bit of a look. Let's say how about the light orange. And then we'll go with a little bit darker orange. I'm going to merge and center this so we can see the, that teacher database. And then give it a bit of a darker orange. Colors don't matter. Nobody's going to see this. Okay. That looks good. Now let's and so we've got everything here for our teacher database. I'm going to save our work. Now we're ready to add in the teachers, new teachers, existing, update, save, load teachers. So how do we do that? That's going to be inside the macro. So I'm going to create a macro. That's going to be inside our students here, excuse me, teachers coming from our students, going into our teacher miscellaneous. There's nothing there now. But what we're going to do, again, we're going to copy that, our student miscellaneous, just like we did. Control A, Control C, going back into our teacher miscellaneous. Again, Control A, V, and again, doing exactly the same thing. This repetition is going to help you learn. We're going to use the find and replace, starting with the biggest name and replacing it in the current module only, replacing it with teachers, right? Teachers is our longest name. We've used it before here. We're going to use replace all. Okay, 14 replacements there. Again, now we're going to do it with the student. So now we're looking for student, and we're going to replace it with teacher, any instance, and we're going to do replace all. Clicking OK, 60 different replacements here. And then lastly, we're going to do the shortest name, which is going to be the students, and replacing that with teacher here. And then replacing all, only in the current module. OK, good. Now we've got it. Now we're not going to use all the modules in this, so we can start teacher clear picture. We don't need that. We don't need the show picture. We don't need add picture. And so we can just hold down the shift, highlight all of those, and just delete them. We're not using those. We're going to use cancel new. We're going to use teacher load. We're going to use teacher sort names, and we're going to use save and update and add new. So all that is going to be correct. Picture path we don't need. There's no picture path, so we, that's not necessary for us. Okay, good. Save in our work our, where we are at. And before we get into the code, why don't we assign some named ranges, some dynamic named ranges to this database. So I'm going to actually do about four of those. So why don't we get started? Let's put in some teacher numbers here, just some samples so we can have in the teacher IGDB anything you want here. We're going to automate that in just a minute, moment, but let's do that. I want to put in named ranges. I want to have a named range for both the teacher number, the teacher ID. I want to have a teacher full name as well as a sorted list of full names, which is going to be down here located in AD. So let's add those named ranges right now. So inside the formulas, name manager, and then we'll do just new. And then what we'll do is create a name. So we're going to call this base it on teacher. And then we'll just do number, underscore number, and then uh, we'll have ID after that. So I'll use it going to base on the offset. So equals offset because I want to dynamic. And we're going to start on the header row. We want to make sure that we start in the header row. So that way if there's no data, it's not going to create an error. So that's what we're going to start on A3. But we need to compensate for that row. So we're going to go down one row, starting one row below. No columns over. We're going to count A. We want to count everything, all the text, starting with the header row and all the way down to, let's say, a large number such as 99999. OK, so now we have that. But since we're, we've included the header row, we do need to deduct for that now. We include the header row purposely. So minus 1 we're going to do. And then also we want a single column, just one column on that. So we're going to tab out, shift tab in. We're going to make sure that those dancing ants encompass all the data. And we can copy that now. And then control, using control C and click OK. And then also I'm going to add a new one. This one's going to be called teacher ID. So teacher and then underscore ID. And then I'm going to paste that. In. I'm going to use those same. We're going to use those same count A. But in this case, it's going to affect column B. So B is where our teacher's ID is here. So that covers our teacher ID. So that's all we have to do. Click OK. I also want teacher full name. So teach and then full name, full name. That's going to be located 
in column AA is our full name. So again, we're going to add an A to this, keeping the count A also in column A. Tab over, and then we don't have any full names, but that's correct. It would be there. Okay, and then one more on the AD. So I'm going to just click OK, and then one new one, and then we're going to call this teacher full name. We could call it name or full name, and then sorted. So I like full name because it's more direct, sorted. So we have that, I'm gonna paste that down there and update all of them. And this time I wanna count AD because we may have some teachers that are no longer with us and we don't have a first name where we've deleted them and then we don't want them in the sorted names or we may add additional filters like only active teachers, you know, maybe we want that. So we're gonna conclude that. So A, this teacher full name will be on a drop down list. This sorted one will be a drop down list. Again, tabbing out here. Let's take a look. So now we got to set the rows. Obviously, teach your full name. That's going to start in two. So we need to start out in row two. That starts in a different row. Two here. And then update that here. So the tab out, tab in. Okay, there's no data, which is okay. I do want to double check that though. So we're going to click O close. And then we're just going to put in test here, making sure that we do accompany the data here. Name manager, again, just to double check, it's always good. Teacher, full name in this one. Let's expand this so we see this sorted tabbing out shrink this a bit and then we can see those dancing ants around our data that's what we want okay good so we've got all the named ranges i've created four different named ranges for that so now let's get back into the code and that's going to help us again before we do a code let's do a few more things inside the teachers list let's go over some of these the teacher number is going to be here so let's say our teacher number is one then we want teacher load that's going to be false select table column uh the Tab column, that's here. It's going to be anywhere from five, six, seven, or eight. That's good the way it is. Teacher row ID. So, what do I want here is I want to update this. Obviously, teacher row is going to be based on the ID. So, let's tab that. So, that's five. That's correct. So, that means teacher row, teacher uh, number, teacher number, not ID, right? We're going to use those differently in this case. Teacher number is going to be based on row five. So, if we look in this here and we see it's four, we need to update that, right? Because we have that. It's going to be starting on that. So, let's update that. Go back into the teachers here, and we see the table column, sorry, teacher column here. <laughs> this is what we're doing. Teacher full name, right? So that's what we have ID. That's not correct, so we need to update that. We want the row based on the ID. Well, what is that? That's teacher ID. That's what we're looking for. That's the one we want. Five is the tab selected. That's correct. Okay, so let's update that. Now, that, of course, is not based. It's based on number one. So we're going to match that, running a match on that. Actually, that's based on the number. ID is going to be located here in J. So we want this based on the number. Going to just say number. It teaches that unique number. So there we go. Row 4 is correct. That's what I want. The next teacher ID, what's that going to be? Let's update that. In this case, I want the number, a teacher number, not the ID. A number is going to be a numerical number. ID is going to be alphanumeric. So we want teacher, in this case, number. I want to know the next one. So we've got that. Next one's going to be 4, right? Because we have 3. And I also want to automate the ID. It's going to be different. I'm going to show you how we do that. So I'm going to put that in, let's say, 19 here. I'm going to put in next teacher ID. Okay, so I want that. It's going to be an alphanumeric. So we're going to highlight that and then we'll get into that. I'll just pull that, give it that those colors here. And let's continue on before we move down, while we're moving down. So I want to know the teacher row. Teacher row. We spelled the teacher wrong. Okay, the teacher. We got abbreviated all these wrong. Let's do that. Uh, teacher, not that it matters, but you get the point. I just like it consistent. So there we go. Now it's consistent. So what we have here is the teacher row based on the name, right? We have the teacher, the teacher ID here. I want to know the max, the next teacher ID, the next teacher ID. We're going to call this number now. I want to be more clear, right? Let's call this number, right? So we're making, we're changing things up a little bit, which is good. So again, ID is going to be an alphanumeric, which we're going to generate. The next teacher number, this is the teacher number here. This is the teacher row based on the number, okay? Based on the number. Because what I want to do is I want to search by ID, alphanumeric ID. I want to be able to search and load by name. So I want to do both of those. So I also want to know we're going to do duplicate names. So we got to, you know, we spelled this wrong. When we when we did replace, we used T-E-A-C instead of T-H. So it's going to, that's okay. Teacher full name. So, but that's okay. We need to update these named ranges anyways based on. So sometimes we do need to, to update these. So what I want to do is I want to base it on a teacher full name. And also this one, teacher full name. Now we did this. This is a, called the 
we're checking for if there are duplicates. So basically what I want to do is if B7 equals empty, that means we're on a new teacher. If we're on a new teacher, I want to know if those names exist. We're going to search the list for full names. If it doesn't exist, if there's an error, right, that means that there, if a match is found, that means it already exists. We're going to mark it as true. That means there's a duplicate. Otherwise, let's say it's an existing. If it's an existing teacher, I also want to find a duplicate. But what I want to know is if it's found, of course, it's, if it's existing, it is found. If it's found, but on a different row, right? If it's not found on B7, if B7 does not equal blank, and it is found, but it's a different row than B7, then it is also true, meaning it's a duplicate. It's an existing duplicate. Otherwise false, otherwise false. So that's going to be based on the teacher full name. Okay, we'll keep that there. And then what we'll do is we'll enter that. Right now it's false. We'll test that out. Out and when we start adding data of course and then I want the full name that's going to be the same it's going to be based on the full name based on either the sort by names just to remember inside uh, our memory we have our admin inside our admin here we've got it based on whether we're sorting based on full names so when we click on the here the admin here in the dashboard inside our application settings here we have a sort by this is the named range called sort by whether it's first name last name or whether it's last name first name so that's how we sort by on the full name okay so back into the teachers we go and also, so we've got that set up, by the way. So we're either going to put in H7, comma, F7, meaning last name, first name, or F7 and H7, meaning first name, last name, based on whatever the sort buys. The next teacher ID, this is the one I want to automate based on an alphanumeric. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's create an alphanumeric ID. We're going to base it on the teacher number located here. And we're also going to base it on the first two letters of each of the names. So why don't we write that code? So I'm going to write in equals. I want the next one, too. So equals so the next one's available in this case left i want the left of what the left of what text the first name and then i want how many characters i want two characters then what do i want i want and the left of two characters of the last name and this would be the last name here and i also want two characters of that so there and then i what do i want then i want an underscore underscore and then what do I want? Then I want the next, right? The next teacher ID when I'm assigning it. What is that next ID going to be? That next teacher number is going to be four. So we're going to, we need to put this in quotes and underscore and the next teacher ID. So that's going to get us the next. So when we add a brand new, so when I add a brand new name, right? I put in the name, first name and last name are going to be required. So we've got that. Then this is our teacher ID, T-I-T-H or whatever it is, it's going to be right here and then underscore four. So that's going to be our alphanumeric teacher ID. So that's you can use dates or anything like that if you wanted to use. Let's say we wanted to put a date in there. Some people have asked me, well, I want to put in dates. So let's say we had a higher date of one one. OK, and then uh, let's do we need to format those while we're at it. So we'll do a short date. Let's say we wanted it based on a date because we do want that sometimes. How would you do that? Well, let's say we didn't want it based on a number. We could do and so we could do text based and the value and however we want to format that so we could do let's say dd slash mm slash y y y y so that way we've got an alphanumeric id based on the name and the date so we could do either one of those so i'm going to undo it keep it the way it was based on the based on the teacher number okay so that's exactly how you create alphanumeric and this is that what we're going to put in right here the teacher id and we're going to place that here when we load it okay so that's everything we need to custom mode we don't need this because this is was for uh, our students so we don't need that we can delete that out and then return that back to its default color and then get rid of the borders on that just so we're consistent okay actually that wasn't the default color but that's okay we get the point here's the default color is that green there for the admin all right continuing on so now we've got all of our formulas set up we're ready to go we're going to test these out once we get some data in there but let's go ahead and write the code and update that code it's already written but we're going to update that code based on the teacher so into the vba we go right where we left off and now i've got this whole range and and let's eliminate this when we add a new student we have to set the teacher load to true and then we're going to set it back to false but why well i've got a lot a large amount of data that i need to clear the content so why don't we write some just add a named range on that so we can do that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep this uh, uh for now unmerged right and i'm going to keep this on, i'm going to unmerge this so our name, so all of our cells are unmerged at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the control. I'm not going to include these two up here because I don't want them cleared necessarily. If we put in a search for a specific teacher, 
and I do need to update this while we're at it. So let's go ahead and do that right now just so we can get it. We got to do a lot of work. So I'm going to update this. Obviously, it's not student names, but it, what do we want? We can use F3 to sign, find our name range. If we use F3, that'll help us get to the teacher. We want teacher, full name, and I want the sorted one. So clicking OK, that'll get us into that. That's what we want to update it. So where were we? We're using, I'm going to use a set a named range to clear those contents out easily. So holding down the control, I'm going to select on all the cells that I want to clear, including the teacher ID. And so I'm going to just select here, here, and then here, and here, and here, and select all of the cells in which I want to clear the contents for new. Theoretically, we could set these as default, but we'll, you know, a default check or something like that, but it's fine. It's very easy to select. So I'm going to hold down the control for all these cells. And then there we go. Now I've got all the cells for the dem and we could do add expenses and payments too while we're at it. But that's a good start. We can clear out the expenses and payments in a larger range. So I'm going to set that as teacher data. So I'm just going to write in teacher data. And just to make sure that it's set right, what we do is we go into here, let's select something else here, and then go back into here, teacher data, and make sure that we've selected all right. Everything looks good. It is that range that I'm now going to clear the contents. We can then go ahead and merge and send these cells and merge and center these cells here under the home, merge and center, and then left justify. And on this specific one, we're going to use top. On this specific one, we're going to use middle. Okay, good. We're good to go on that. So let's continue. Now we've got a name range called teacher data. So that's going to help us out. So instead of all of this code here, right, all we need to do is write in teacher data. Perfect. But we do need a little bit more than that. So because we chose not to add in our expenses and payments, so we also need to add, I want to add it, clear all this added. So all the way from E32, we could easily add this in the name range, all the way to L51. E32 through L51, I want to clear that out. So we can just do dot range. And then E, let's drop it down here so we can kind of see a little bit at least the top region here. E32 through L52. E32 through l 52 we want to clear those contents out what else do we want well i want to focus also on the assigned classes again this would be e55 all the way through l74 so e55 through l74 and then one more range for the attachments we want to make sure those are cleared out i'm not sure if we did this on the students i need to make sure we are clearing these i think i think we missed this area on the students so i'm going to double check that e78 through h97 e78 through h97 e 78 through H97. Okay, good. Now we've got everything is set up and it's not clear contents, but actually clear contents. Okay, clear tab data. And then we'll call this clear, clear general info. Clear general info. Okay, let's take a look at the rest going over the hood. Hide existing teacher group. We know those buttons are correct. Okay, we don't have a teacher picture. We can clear that out. And uh, we also have set teacher load to false. That'll be fine and E5 run macro to view general info tab. That could be very helpful because if we're loading, if I load in a new teacher, right? Let's say I load in here a new teacher or something like that. I want this general info to appear automatically. So selecting E5 will do just that for us. So we can keep that there just as it is. Okay, continuing on. Now we want to save and update the teacher. We've got a few required fields. And you know something we didn't do on the students we need to do? Remember we did check, right? We want to need to check if there's duplicates, right? If there's a duplicate let's take a look at um, if there's a duplicate this is going to be true if this is true we can't do it make sure we add it to the students I better do it right now let's do it right now while we're thinking about it okay I don't I don't want to be able to save those students if there's already a duplicate so student miscellaneous all we need to do down here is come right down here and in the save and update right we've got certain conditions if it's empty b15 oh here it is right here b15 just to make sure b15 is true good we did it and we're in here making sure that we also have it for the teachers i'm just wanted to make sure that we're, we're good there b15 equals true name already exists please let's say teacher name perfect everything is good so we found i'm just going to put that in duplicate found so it's clear um required and then just put required first name and last name that's it so we're good to go on that we've double checked that and now b7 is empty it's a new teacher right b7 right when i when i load an existing what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put that teacher number right here into b2 if this is blank right b7 is going to be of course empty and it's also b2 must be cleared out on new so we need to update that b2 so making sure if this is empty we know it's a new teacher so let's write that in here 
B2 must add that here. B2, we must clear the contents out of that as well. Okay, continuing on. So if B7 is empty, it's a new teacher, what are we going to do? We're going to assign a new teacher row based on the teacher database. Double checking that that sheet is absolutely spelled right based on the code name. Teacher database, it is correct. That's what I want there. Okay, so the teacher database, we're going to find the first available row. J7, right, it's going to be the uh, teacher ID. We're going to change that, right? This one, this is the one I want to make. The teacher ID is going to go, that's going to be called the teacher number, right? So I want to put that in here number it's going to come directly it's going to go not into j7 not into j7 our, our teacher id is going to take that spot but i want to put our teacher id located in b2 right our next teacher number is in here located in nine i'm going to take that number i'm going to place it directly into b2 so we're going to update that accordingly b2 is going to equal whatever is in b9 that's the i'm going to put the next which is really is next teacher number. Now I also want to place that teacher number directly inside A, right? So whatever's in B9, I want to put it directly in and column A, but I want to do one more. I want to place the teacher. This is called teacher number now. I hope it's not confusing for you because I changed things up a little bit, but it's good to change things up because I want to show you different ways and you not do the same thing all the time. B, column B is going to handle our teacher ID, our alphanumeric, alphanumeric, ID. So that's where, where is that going to come from? Our next one, remember we've assigned it right here, B19, and that's going to go directly inside our B. Why am I not using data mapping to map these? Because we're placing, these are formulas. I don't want, I want to place directly in here, only the on for new teachers. This this column will never change. This could change, this will never, well, this, theoretically the teacher could change if it's, of course, the first name changes, the last name changes, it could change. We'll make those updates on the change, but I just want to make sure that we get that in there right now. Okay, so B is going to take on not necessarily what's in B9, it's going to take on uh, what's in B19. So let's update that right now and b19 but all right let's move on actually i think i'm going to add this b19 okay but i want to do it for me. i'm probably going to add this also for existing just in case in case there's any change so we might do that as well but I'll write that in a different formula. So X1 copy, what is this? What are we doing? I'm actually taking a formula, teacher X1, and I'm bringing it down here, but it's no longer X. Remember, we built this formula, and that's going to create this full name formula. I'm going to highlight that in yellow so we know it's a formula. This is the formula. I want to take this formula, and I want to bring it down here into this brand new. But that formula, of course, coming from AA and no longer X. So we've made that update, different database. So we're going to change that to AA. This is going to be AA as well. I want to paste the formula. Let's cut copy mode false. Okay, existing teacher row is going to be located in B7. Okay, but what if they update the name? What if they make a change to the name? That ID number is dynamic, so we want to make that change. So why don't we write that in to the code here? So, teacher, so we have inside, why don't we do that? Let's say existing teacher ID. So the existing one is going to be pretty much the same as this, except it's not going to be based on B9. So I'm going to copy that down here. I'm going to paste that down here. And it's not going to be based on B9. Why is that B9 is, is based on the next teacher number, but I want to base it on the existing. So here we have the, so if we have, let's say in this case, let's say we have six, right? It's going to be based on this. So for an existing, if they change the name, I want to update that automatically. So let's do that. Let's write that in. So for existing, I'm going to take it from B21. So let's write that in right now. So we've got that. So in this case, we're focused on this and not going to be, it's going to be just copy this here and then make the updates accordingly. Teacher row, the teacher ID is going to be based B21. And we're going to say existing. Let's just put existing. That's for existing teachers. Okay, so that shows us how to create a new dynamic alphanumeric teacher ID or update the existing. If their name changes, it's automatically going to update. Okay, so now we're going to run through our data mapping. Now, we're not going to start at 2, of course. Why and what not? Because we're going to start on column 3, where we've already taken care of both columns A and B. We've already got the information here. But I want to start out on column C, and I want to go all the way to AA. And in this case, we've already taken the formula. So really, all we're going to do is go through Z, which is column 26. So we can start our loop from 3 to 26. It's going to loop through all the columns. And all we're going to do, again, just as we've been through data mapping, we're going to look for whatever's in L9, and we're going to put it here. We're going to look at L11 and put it here based on the new row. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure we're going to clear that data out here. We want to make sure the next teacher number is 1. 
and make sure we're set on a brand new ID. So inside the teachers here, the next teacher ID is one, we're correct. We're gonna delete this because we are on a new student. If we we're gonna save that, we'll do it. We'll save it as a different name. These are student names. And we have no data here. So let's update the names here under the teacher database, making sure we clear out those names and clear them out here. That'll all actually all to clear all them clear automatically based on the code, of course. It'll clear this out and then take this data and re-upload new data and resort those. And there's a few different reasons. One, I want it alphabetically. Two, I want to skip any ones that may have been deleted. If they're deleted, they won't have a first name. So that's why we're we're, we're removing anything with no first name. So we'll run that when we run the, when we do our load. So we're going to come to that very, very soon. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're saving 3 to 26. We're going to take that teacher row. We know the teacher row. The teacher row is either going to be based on if it's an existing row in B7, an existing teacher, or if it's based on a new one, we're going to get it from here. So either one, new teacher or existing teacher, we've got the row. We've got the columns we're going to head here. It's going to take all that data through data mapping and update that. All right, we're going to set the teacher load to true. Again, we want to make sure we add the teacher full name. It's no longer located in AA. It's now it's no longer in X. It's now in AA. That adds the teacher full name to F3, right? Once I have that brand new teacher name, I want to make sure, or even if we've updated it, I want to make sure that F3 uh, takes on that full name, whether it's uh, last name, first name, or first name, last name. I want to put that directly in F3 to load it up. Okay, so continuing on, once we have that B3, we're going to set that back to false. Why do we have this and why do we have this? Because when I make a change to F3, it's automatically going to assume that the user is searching for a name and it's going to load it in. But in this case, we're not, right? So we need to differentiate between that. This B3, this true or false setting is going to let us know the user is making a change here or the VBA is adding the name that we just added, okay? Or updating existing name. So we need to differentiate. And then, of course, we're going to run the macro to sort names. And that's what we're going to do right now, the sort names. We'll go over this code before running it. We're going to save our... our Let's save our changes here. Okay, we'll bring this up and then we're going to focus directly on the teacher's database here. This is where our focus is. Basically, I want to determine the last row. We're going to run an advanced filter all the way to full name, all the way to AA. We're going to run our criteria from AC2 all the way to AC3. And then we're going to have that full name uh, come here and we have those results come here directly inside AD. So that's what we're going to set it up inside the code. First, we determine the last row. And then what we want to do is we want to clear, not necessarily AA3 in this case, we want to do AD. I want to clear any results that might be there under those, the previous results coming in AD. Then what I want to do is determine if it's less than four, then we're going to skip sort, right? There's nothing to do if we don't have any data. A3 is where it's going to start, but in this case, it's going to go all the way to AA. That's where we have the last one. Our criteria in this case is going to be focused on AC, so we're going to change that to AC and then AC3. Then our results are going to come into AD. That's where we want those full names. Okay, good. So now that we have that, our, our dynamic name range is going to automatically take on that list. We're going to determine the last results row based on AD this time, and we're going to sort it based on that. This time, our sort, our key is going to be located in AD3, and we're sorting column AD and then AD. So we're going to make that update. That's it. That's all we need to do. Okay, so we're going to run this macro as soon as we add or update names, as soon as we save them. And then that's going to update that list. Okay, what about teacher loading? This is what we were talking about. Okay, the first thing, obviously, we don't have a teacher pick. We can remove that. We want to make sure that B7 is not e equals empty. Then we're going to skip, please correct a teacher name or ID. So that's going to help us there. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is clear out some contents. Obviously, let's we can just change that now to teacher data because we added that in teacher data okay not date data double check if you're not sure all you need to do is just go into the formulas name manager type in teacher and then data and then just edit sometimes i just copy this control c and go back that ensures that you have the name the right name range of course you can also use the brackets if you like as well so teacher data here what we're going to do just paste that in making sure it's correct clearing the contents okay the teacher row is going to be based on whatever's in b7 again we're going to load but this time i don't want to load I want to load everything from 3 to 23, 3 to 26. That's what we're loading in here. Three. Okay, great. Actually, in this case, we're going to go 1 to 26. Why are we going 1? Because I want to load that ID, right? I want to put that teacher number directly inside B2. I want to put that ID directly into J7. There's no formulas in there, so we can do that, right? B2, of course, is going to take on our, let's go back to teachers here. It's going to take on our teacher number. J7 is going to take on our ID, so we can go all the way from 1. And one all the way down to 26. Okay, so now that we have that, we can focus on our information that we're bringing over. 
And all we're going to do is we're going to bring in the teacher database cells from row one, teacher column, bring in the data from directly from the database, whatever row we selected, bringing them all in based on our data mapping here, bring them all into the teacher fields right here. Once we have that, then we continue on with the next step. Then I want to make sure, again, setting that teacher load to true, right, bringing it in here. And then also changing that. Actually, we can probably put it here in case we're gonna in case we add additional features here. I'm gonna bring it up here before we load the data. And why is that? Because if I make changes in the data, maybe I want to show you a great way to save those changes automatically. So I need to differentiate between changes that the database that the VBA is making, which is here, those kind of changes, and changes where the user is actually making a change where they're changing an address or something like here. So I want to differentiate between those two changes. So we're gonna bring that up here, setting the uh, first setting teacher load true and then of course setting it back to false down here once changes are made. F3 is going to take on the full name and that's located in, not in X anymore it's located in AA that full name is now located in column AA right here as opposed to the students. Okay so we brought in the full name and now what we could do now let's change that now we can make it B4, B3 to false we've made VB has made all the changes necessary then what we can do is we can just Aussie it's now an existing student group so we can make sure to display that and we can hide the new group and then if B5 equals false then we don't need there's no such thing as this and we're not showing a picture so we can remove that okay and then we can get rid of the end if okay so we can get that all that let's get rid of that this is what I want to get rid of here there we go. That's what I want. Okay, so now we're clear with that. We've got that covered. And that's to do it for load. What about cancel new, right? When we're in the new mode, what do I want to happen? Well, I want to click cancel and I want to, if assuming that there is any existing teachers, I want to load, let's just say the first one. So first we just need to check, is there a name here? If, if it's AA, is there some teacher in row four? If so, let's load that one. So all we need to do is just write that into code, which we did. If AA3, right, we can use AA3, value design equal MP, and let's make that AD3, which is going to be the first name, first name, AD3, does not equal empty, then the teacher's F3 equals AD3. That's going to cancel new. As soon as we load that in, running our macro, it's going to load that first teacher in there. And then all the teacher delete, let's make sure if B7 is empty, then please select a correct teacher to delete. That looks good. In message box, are you sure you want to delete this teacher? Yes, no, delete teacher. Perfect. Teacher row is going to equal teacher B7. That's the teacher row. And then also, let's go ahead and delete. Um, we have two options here, just like we did before in student teacher database. If we're not using uh, sharing and seeing, we can delete the entire row. That should be okay. However, in this application, we are using uh, teacher. We are using share and sync for all of our databases. So what I want to do is I want to delete everything. Let's change this to 3 to 26, 3 to 26. Okay, so what I mean is I want to basically clear everything out, clear all everything out other than the teacher, let's say the teacher number and the teacher ID. I want to clear the first name out. And what that's going to do is when I run that sorted list, it's going to anything with first name that's that doesn't exist is not going to be in this name so we can't load that once the teacher is deleted it's not going to load although their uh, id and their uh, number are going to be in the database and i want to keep that okay just as for everything else so to do that all we do is run a loop from 3 to 26 teacher column teacher row teacher columns clear the contents of each field teacher run teacher the add new it's going to run that macro and then it's going to run the teacher sort names and it's going to resort the names and it's going to exclude that name from there because it's no longer exists so that updated list is going to be here it's going to be included excluding that one that we just deleted and in turn it's also going to exclude them from this drop down list here okay so that's it so that's all we need to do that's the last macro for teacher miscellaneous i'm going to save that and we're going to add some data in here let's just change the name on here to let's say Luis, Fred will make his appearance later, don't worry. And then we'll just call this um, Thomas. Okay, so we've got everything here. I got the hire date. Let's put in, a, just to make sure, uh, 515. She didn't work out very well. Kind of lazy teacher. If pay frequency, let's just do monthly, add in some real data. And the phone, we can format these. Why don't we hold the control down and format those as phone numbers, of course. And we can use uh, something like uh, more number formats or special or something like that. And we'll go down to, we can special and put in phone number here. Okay, so that's it. We can add a few more numbers here and make it numbers, not letters, Randy. Numbers, okay, there we go. That looks good. And now what we'll do is we'll just save our work. Always save our work before running macros. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sign that macro so we're going to hold down the control clicking on here and here both the button and the icon and then right click assigning that macro and that's going to be called teacher save or update so we're going to scroll down here save or update clicking okay 
I'm going to do this too. Cancel new. Holding down the control. Again, uh, right click here. Assigning the macro. And then in this case, it's going to be teacher cancel new. So teacher cancel new. That's the one I'm looking for. Clicking OK. All right. Again, saving our work once more. I'm an avid saver. Save that teacher. Checking out teacher database. I think it's teachers database. Let's update that. Making sure we, we didn't. Sheet one, we got to update the properties here. This should be teacher database. Okay, fix that there. That we missed up. No problem. Now it's ex now to be recognized because we also want to change the code name. Check in there. Okay, running the macro. This looks good. We've added the, the t name looks good. It's now in the drop down list. T uh, teacher ID, we need to update that. That's not correct there. Why, what I want to show is I want that to show uh, what was the L O T H one so making sure that j7 must take on whatever's in me 19 as well so we have to add that in inside our load so that's up on our save so when we save an update one when we, right now we've added it to b which is correct that alphanumeric but what i also want to do is i want to add it to whatever is in j7 so let's just write that inside dot range j7 dot value equals and whatever's in let's say b19 okay and then we'll do the same thing for existing right when we save an update i want to make sure that any updates also go inside j7 so we can write that up right now just as we did so but in this case of course we're going to be based on that number so we can copy this what's ever in j7 and if there's any existing changes then that gets loaded in as well and this comes from b21 if it's an existing so now when we update it all I need to do is just click update. Again, we're going to uh, right click, assign the macro, save and update teacher. Right click, sign that macro, teacher save and update. Make sure we have that right here. Click OK. Now click update. OK, now the teacher ID looks good. That's prob the way I want it on new. And then obviously new teacher, I'm going to sign the macro here. And then right click here. And then click uh, sign the macro. OK, great. Teacher. And then we're putting in this one, of course, is a new teacher. So I want teacher, add new, click OK. Deleting teacher, the last one here. And then we'll go ahead and uh, update this with the correct macro. So teacher, and then this is delete. So now we've assigned it, created macros for all those. OK, so we do new teacher, debug that. Let's see teacher data, clear contents. All right, this is probably based on our merge and center. If we were to unmerge these just temporarily, let's see if we still get that that will unmerge okay and then we'll update the name range accordingly so let's continue on okay it looks perfect so it worked right when they're unmerged so that means what I want to do is I want to update the named range so based on that so I'm going to do that merge and center those okay just the way we did before and then what we'll do is we'll update that named range because we want to include we don't want to include individual cells in that named range so under the formulas name manager teacher data let's put it up teacher data is the one and we'll bring this down so we can see the data. And we're going to edit that. So basically, what I want to do is I want to include anything from F9 all the way through H9. And not individually, F9. So here, we want F9 through H9. F9 through H9. So all we need to do, again, is here, just get rid of this. We don't need the F9 here. And then all we need to do is update this to F. So it's now F9 nine through h9 okay good and the same thing down here for our we have our e19 all the way through looks like j22 again e19 through j22 let's uh, write that up now here so we can do that e19 through j22 making sure that looks good right there so i think we only had one issue so e19 through j22 so let's check that make sure that's good close we will cancel the new and then let's see cancel it we didn't we didn't add the load macro up in there we need to add this load macro so when we make a change to this uh it automatically loads let's do that right now so into the developers and then the visual basic what we're going to do is we're going to go inside directly inside the teachers right here and add some code not selection change but it's actually going to be worksheet change so we go into the worksheet change we're going to write some code to do just that Great. So what do we want to happen? So basically, when user makes a change to F3, but not just any change, I want to make sure that the user is actually making change and not VBA. So we want to make sure that B3 is false. And we also want to make sure that B11, B11 is going to be based on our teacher row based on the name, right? I want to make sure that this is not blank, right? So teacher, let's update that. That's not correct. Teacher full name. That's what I want. Teacher full name. So I want to make sure that contains a row. Okay, so there we go. So it's four, which is correct. Making sure that is here. 
Okay, again, this is also not correct here. Let's update. I thought we updated that. Teacher ID. Okay, that's what I want. And then we can, so basically, so when we enter an ID here, I want to make sure. So what was that ID that we just had for this one? So let's take a look at that one, make sure we'll add that in in just a moment. So I want a list of IDs here that we can put in our teacher ID. Okay, so we've got this, right? So when they make a change, I want to look to make sure that B11 is not empty, that there is an actual row. And I also want to make sure that this is actually false. So let's write that in here. And when they make a change to F3, so going in there, and then we'll do that if not intersection. And that's auto hotkey F3 if they make a change F3 and another condition and range I want to make sure that B3 dot value equals false only false and another condition I also want to make sure B11 and range B11 I want to make sure that that is not empty dot value does not equal empty if the, all those conditions are true then what do I want to do and then I want to load. So then I want to do something. So, but first, before I load it, I want to make sure that that ID, that teacher, excuse me, that teacher number goes directly into B2. I know the row. So how do I get that? So A, A, of course, here's our teacher name, A, and whatever is in that row, in this case, one, I want to place that teacher number directly into B2, directly here, right into B2. So let's write that up right now. So that's the first thing. Then we're ready to load it. So, okay range b2 dot value equals teacher database dot range a and what is the row the row is located in b11 so whatever's inside b11 that's the row so and b11 dot value equals okay equals the teacher database so that's going to set the row set set teacher number and when that does it, that sets the row. Why is that important? Because as soon as I change this to row, I know that B7 now contains a row. So as soon as I change that up there, now I can go ahead and load it. So we get ready to load. So now we just need to run the macro. So teacher, I'm gonna put it all under case, load, make sure that changes to uppercase where needed. Okay, now I know the macro's correct. So that's gonna actually run the macro. So now as soon as I double click and change that, it's gonna actually load all the data here. Perfect. That's just the way I like it. Let's double check to make sure everything looks correct. Okay, nice. I like that. Also, but what about if they enter an ID? If they make a ch if they enter that ID, L O T H underscore one, I want that also. I want that teacher to load based on the ID, right? I want to make sure if they enter the correct ID, this is going to be four or the row number. If they enter it incorrectly, it's going to be blank. So all we need to do is just check that to make sure. So why don't we add that in right now? And that's going to be very, very similar. So let's go ahead and copy that. Again, this time I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it down here. But this is going to be based on, let's just call this name change, name change. And we're going to call this ID change or let's call it ID search and name search. I think that's better. We can also add a drop down list to it, but ID will keep it there, keep it the way it is now. And we could add a drop down list. Okay, so of course, this one's not based on F3, it is based on H3. So let's update that right away, and then we can continue on. So H3, and also we need to make sure B3 is false, but in this case, it's not B11. Where's the row focus? This is gonna be on B13. This is based on, this is the row based on the ID that's entered, located in H3. So we wanna make sure that B3 is not empty, and if it is, then we can load it in. So B13, there we go. Okay, so B13, if they enter, then it's gonna correctly. Then, in that case, what I do is I also want to take whatever's in B13, right? The row's gonna be coming from B13A, and B13 and place it, and then load the teacher. So if I, let's just say I clear, let's say copy this here, and then we'll add the new, so that means it's gonna clear out all the data. And then what we're gonna do, so in this case, add new, we do wanna make sure that we clear out also H3. So I wanna make sure, but for now, our purposes, it's okay. Entering that, it's gonna load in the data. So adding in H3 on add new, let's update the code on that. And I wanna make sure that that gets covered as well. H3, because I wanna clear out the search on add new. I think that's gonna be helpful. So uh, go close out of here. And then here's our add new. Again, I'm gonna add H3 to that. And probably should add F3 to that too, F3 to that. And okay, good. So this, but when we do this, it may cause an issue. So we may wanna load it. Uh, actually, it's gonna be perfect. It won't cause an issue. B3 is set to true. So when I make a change to F3, as long as B3 is true, nothing's gonna happen. Clicking new teacher is gonna clear out both of those. No issues there pasting in that data now it's going to load automatically or pasting in if i click new again 
load the teacher, there's going to load an either new ID. So perfect. That's just the way that I want it. We can now load the teacher based on selecting the teacher name or entering the teacher ID. Okay, let's add a few more teachers and make sure that it's working good. Make sure Fred gets his appearance here because that we just can't have that in training without Fred. Save the teacher. Okay, FR, that, that looks good. We've got the address here. want to update that. I'm going to show you a great way to update this automatically. Automatic. Now, we have update on save and update, but there's really two ways we can do that. That's a long address. Okay, let's left justify that. That should be left justified. And I want to update that. But what if I want to make a change? What if I just simply want to change and I want that change to save automatically? Now, in the students, right, when we did that, we did the column heading up here. Let's see if we did that here. We didn't. We just did update. But what if I want to update? Let me make sure. No, we didn't do anything. I've got some really great ideas to how we can do that. So what if I want to update those teachers? I'm going to add this to the students as well. A any change that I make updated automatically. Now in the past, what we've done is data mapping. What we need to do is I need to locate the column. All right, I need to know that this is column three in our database. If I make a change here, I know the row for existing. For new, you know, for new we'll click save. But for existing, we know the row automatically. That row is going to be always five. Now we need to know the column. We need to know that this is column three. I need to know that that first name is in column three. So how do we know that? Well, in the past, what we've done is just put that three somewhere else. Right, I've put it off the screen. I've put it, you know, in other places here inside the students or anywhere else or underneath or something like that. But there's actually a better way, which was pointed out to me by one of my great students and the followers. I really appreciate that. In a YouTube comment, let's take a look at this YouTube comment from David Moonsey. Sorry if I pronounce your name, Randy. To avoid having these extra references offset cells, the product spreadsheet for handling updates to an individual cell, why don't you replace product column equals target offset, which we've been using, or some other type of offset, right? With product list range one through one, find what, replace target address, dollar sign, removing the dollar sign, dot column. Basically, it's a great idea. Let's do that. I really love the idea. Thank you so much, David. Let's give that a try and see how it works. This way, if you ever re-let out your form, you only need to update the cell reference in the appropriate column and row one of the products. Great idea. Now, this was referencing an older video, but it would work for any of us. And basically what he's saying is, when I make a change to here, Fred, I all I need to do is look for F7, right? We've made a change to F7. Now, the absolute reference includes the dollar signs, but if we take away those dollar signs and look for F7, what I want to do is I want to look in all the column row. I'm going to look for F7. Once it's found in row one, determine what column it is. And once we have that column, all we need to do is just then find it. So again, all we need to do is column. Great idea. Let's do that. Okay, so let's write up some code to do just that. Of course, that's going to be in our change event. So we're going to focus on our teacher's change event right here. And now, but not any kind of change, only some kind of change, right? Worksheet change event. But let's see what kind of change. So if not, right, it's going to be an intersection, right? Obviously, based on a certain range. And what is that range? Then, okay, and if we'll close the loop, it's going to create an issue. So let's go in. So when we make a change anywhere from, let's say, here all the way from, uh, it's easier to just do E7 all the way over to L let's say 21 l21 that should cover it. again e7 all the way through l21 so let's write that up e7 through l21 okay so now we've got the change but of course it's not on any change right if vba is making the change right then i don't want to change only when the user is making the change so certainly we need to make sure that the teacher load b3 is false okay that's make sure and i also want to do that only for existing students not new and range b3 dot value equals false and of course only for new existing students so we want to make sure that of course b7 is not empty b7 because that's new students will be empty and range b7 dot value is not equal empty then we're ready then we're ready to make that update so okay so let's do that oh that's the wrong place here and range b3 dot value equals false and and range b7 dot value does not equal empty then what are we going to do then what i want to make sure is i want to get that so the dimension let's just call it the teacher column keeping consistent as long okay and that teacher column equals teacher column is going to be equal to again let's use it over so it's going to be equal to let's the teacher database dot and what is it we're going to use the range again just as he said 
one, the entire, we'll do the entire row, one through one. Dot, we're going to look for find. What are we going to find? We're looking for what? What are we looking for? We are looking for the specific cell reference, but not just, just the only cells, only F7. We don't want to include the dollar sign, so we need to replace it. So we're going to be looking for, using the replace, we're looking for the target dot address, right? That's what we're looking for, but I'm looking for it without the dollar sign, so I certainly need to replace. What am I going to replace? I'm going to replace that dollar sign with nothing, okay, with nothing. Okay, that's it. Now, double quote, double in parentheses, so that's what we're going to replace. That's what we're looking for, and then we're looking for the column of that, the column. Once that is found, if, now we're making sure that if it's not, if, right, teacher column does not equal zero, then we're ready to do then we can do it so then how do we do it so we, why don't we dimension the teacher row is long while we're at it so we mention that the teacher row as long okay we set the teacher row here the teacher row is going to be of course located in b7 so we know that that's got to be accurate teacher row is equal to range b7 dot value teacher row and then of course this sets the teacher column this is much easier i wish i had learned this a long time ago but i mean it's 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 really great much easier so teacher column thank you so much david for this we don't you know we have to be able to learn as we go on we some we always update and modify and learn and grow that's we all do that so it's just normal so if teacher column does not equal zero then what do i want to do then i want to make sure that we're going to update so then teacher database dot cell database dot cells and then we're going to focus on the teacher row teacher column dot value equals the target dot value that's it super simple let's take a look and test it out and if bringing this down here okay i like that much 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 better okay saving that the only there would the only time there would be an issue is if for some reason it's not found right you've mismapped right a first name is not f7 or it's not h7 so let's change this to freddy okay take a look inside our teacher's database and now it shows freddy brilliant love it absolutely love it thank you so much that's fantastic i will no i will no longer use it the other way this is our new method okay you're here in ground baking the first time i've used it you will not see me mapping columns anywhere around here or anywhere else that's the old way you we now learn something new we all grow together thank you so much perfect absolutely love it loss Angeles. So now it's going to work. Obviously, for new teachers, it's not going to work. But that's it. I'm going to actually do the same thing for. Okay. So now we've seen here the city, the date. It's all updated in our database. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Good. Now let's check. That's a nice way of doing things. Absolutely love it. And we'll save our work. I want to add one more new teacher and then just delete. Obviously, we can't delete Freddie. He's been with us so long. It's just not right. One thing when we do new teacher, I want to automatically put F7. I'm going to select F7. So let's add that to the code right now so new teacher f7 select so here we select i want to do this on add new not e5 i don't think that's good i want to do f7 here after that after that after we've selected so do that one more time that's going to uh, just change this and then here and then f7 that will select the first name so that it gives them a good start first name making things a little bit more user friendly okay all right continuing on so cancel new and then let's do the cancel new let's update that i want to make sure that that changes automatically so okay we do need to make one more important change right we've made a change to the name first name or last name when i make a change to either one of these i need to make sure we are also updating our surnames notice we've changed this from fred to freddie but what happens here look this is still in the old name so anytime we make a change to either the first name or the last name, we also have to run the macro to sort those names. So why don't we update that and make that change? So what do I want to do? I want to run this macro, teacher sort names, when we make a change to either here, either uh, F7 or H7. So let's write that up right now so that we can automatically update those names accordingly. So back into the teachers here. So here's our code here. So now what I'm going to do is just write here, if not, intersection of course we're basing it again on f7 or h7 f7 or h7 then we need to automatically then right in that case 
run the sort name. So that way, we automatically, anytime we make a change to that, it's automatically loaded, okay? Because Freddy's not going to work. Let's load Lewis. Okay, debug that. Okay, so we had an error. So basically what happens is as soon as we've cleared out these names, we created a bug. Now, why did it do that? Because it's not found. So we've cleared out the names, but remember, we're making sure that uh, loading B3 is false, right? So let's take a look inside the load, close this out, take a look inside the load. Notice that we've cleared out the teacher data, but then, but first, but we haven't marked the teacher load to true. So if I move this up here, before we actually clear the data, as soon as we make a change, that's going to be better. So let's run that. And let's reset that. And now let's we'll go ahead and load in this teacher. Now it's going to load without a problem, right? Because as soon as we cleared that out, it created an issue, right? So it works fine, but we should also write in send to make sure that we don't actually end up with anything, okay? Because we do need to update that. Okay, good. So I like that. Now let's load in. So remember, Freddy, now it's been updated, right? But what if I make that change back to Fred? I want to make sure that we are also resorting the names, right? So in here, when I make a change here, anytime, let's go ahead and put that in the teachers right here. That's what I want here. When I make a change to anytime F7 or H7, I want to make sure we resort those names appropriately. Okay, of course, that's going to be after we update. So after we make those updates. So now if I decide to make this uh, Fred and also what we should do actually is also update that so not only do we want to update this we want to make sure we update this as well so we're gonna write that and let's write that in right now so nothing then sure we want to sort the teachers right but we also want to do one other thing and if I also want to update the name accordingly so how do we do that well what we're gonna do and 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 if so just going to update those, and all we need to do is take that sort and take that actual name and place it directly. Where is that name located? It's located right here inside B17. B17, all I'm going to do is take B17, whatever change we make, and place it directly inside F3. But to do that, we need to make sure that we're also at B3 is false. So I'm going to make, because I don't want to reload it again, so I'm going to set that up. I'm going to set range B3 dot value equals true. I'm going to make that change range again f3 dot value equals range b19 and put that full name in there because we've made a change dot value and then we're going to set b3 back to false range b3 dot value equals false okay so let's go try because we want to also update that name so if i change this back to fred here we want it also to update here and there there okay we didn't correct that b19 b17 not b19 let's update that that doesn't work 17 there we go full name put in that full name okay take a look at that again double clicking here we'll update that okay that's what i want right so as soon as we so now that updated list in there so if we change that to john or something like that it's automatically updated not only in the list but updated at the top as well same thing for here john fred we're going to update that. It automatically updates. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. Awesome. Okay, this has been really cool. We want to also get to the list. Let's see if we can cover some of the student, uh, the teacher list. We want to make sure that updated because now we just have student data, and that's not going to help us. I want to put the teacher data directly in here. Since we've already done it on the student list, why don't we just uh, update and copy that and make the updates accordingly? So taking a look at the student list macros we have some of them already here let's take a look in the teacher list macros and we don't have anything there so let's update that student list macros here and update that so i'm going to copy that and i'm going to place it directly inside teacher list we've got two of them here that's not going to work this one we don't this one let's remove this one we don't need that okay thought we had to remove the teacher list we don't need that one we have it right here teacher list and i'm going to rename that the way that i like it teacher list okay the name that I recognize it and then macros okay underscore macros okay so we've got them here at least some of them here and then we'll just make the updates accordingly and then we're good to go okay so teacher list show I think we've already worked on that teacher list hide we've worked on that now let's focus on the sort right focusing on this specific list here so we can run this code here and then we'll be made it make any changes so gonna be based again on the teachers sort sort fields clear that's gonna work just fine last row is gonna equal n that'll cover it that's good here and then also what I want to do is if the last row is less than 27 that's gonna be fine application screen updating again our ad this is not going to change 14 to 26 this is going to change our header columns okay so we obviously we don't have the right the same so let's copy in all of our headers the ones that we have starting with teacher number all the way over up until but not including the full name so i'm going to copy this i'm going to paste that inside our teachers here 
pasting that in, and then we'll update the formats accordingly. So we're going to paste in those values here. Now we've got the right information here, and then we're going to have to bring it over a little bit because we've done it. So I'm just going to bring this over here all the way to here. There we go. That looks good. And then we're going to merge and center that. So we've got all of the data that we want here. And then back one more time, merge and center that. Okay, obviously this is not this the teachers list that's a bit long we can reduce these down uh, as much as possible these ones because these are smaller you know and then update the data now these are going to be wingdings so I'm going to delete the data here we're going to focus just on the wingdings so I'm going to go all the way down here as much as we can whatever and those are those specific seven columns are going to be wingdings all I want to show is the check mark in for those so changing that font to wingdings okay good great so bringing that in we're going to need to bring in all that data of course but this is a good start here so we've got the teacher ID obviously this data is not correct so let's just go ahead and delete this here because that data is not not correct That's student data so we don't need that conditional formatting is already set we're good to go I'm gonna bring in the, the teacher data here even though we just have just a little bit here if I can correctly copy that and then not including excluding the full name and then bringing that inside the teachers here pasting that into the first row pasting those values all right good so we've got the teacher ID we can uh, minimize that a little bit if we can and uh, Good. All right. I like that. That looks good. And bringing it in. Okay. Very good. So now let's continue on with those macros so that we can get that sort working. So the column header is also going to be on 24. That's not going to change. And then, of course, well, our first column is going to be on 26. That's not going to change. We did go over this. Active cell, we're placing this descending triangle, or we're going to add in the ascending triangle. Again, this is going to change. Our range is going to change. It doesn't go to AJ now. It actually is going to go to a larger column. We're going to focus our last columns located on AM. Remember, I said we're going to need to update that, which we do in a certain column AM, right? And then also up here, we do need to do that up here. I think uh, we had one list, right? Remember, we just talked about we need to update this as well a m here and a m here okay good so we've got the right columns now the sort here's all the way to a m applying it and 25 select true okay let's take a look at that that sort and see how we're going if there's any issues with that and then we can move on although we only have two rows of data but it should work just fine okay so let's add the selection change macro to make that all happen so if we go in to the worksheet change here this specific teacher teachers worksheet and we're going to focus on selection change if we make a selection change to our thing so we've already done that in the students so all we need to do again is just on header selection so we just need to change that to students it's all that we could have written it pretty easily but teachers here focus on that in selection change down here on header selection of teachers it's going to go all the way to am right not aj and then of course we need to update the name not from student list sort but to teacher list sort and it should automatically cap okay good so there we're good now let's take a look at that so now we're going to run that it's on teacher first name we're going to expand that column a little bit let's click it again it's going to automatically sort okay i really like that that looks really good okay so now we can continue on with our filtering so why don't we add some filtering into that that's the last macro we're going to be adding i can't wait to share that with you let's take a look inside there so we already have it so it's going to be super super easy to write so clear filter Right in this case, what I want to do is we're going to focus on the teacher database. We're not going to use X. That database is different. We're going to clear all the way. We need to add in some named ranges on that. So we're going to do that. So let's add that in here. So I'm going to copy this here, copy all this. And we what we want to do is we want to add it to our criteria. Where's our criteria? It's going to start in B A. So we might as well be consistent the way we had it before. So our criteria, I'm going to put all the way over here, just reduce some of these columns here. We don't need these columns that big here and also here. So bringing that down and again, it's going to start on BA, making it consistent and then pasting that in here, pasting those in BA2. That is where our criteria is going to go. BA2 to BA3, BA2. It's not going to be BX in this case, of course. We need to add to that. It's going to go beyond that. So we're going to go all the way to BZ. Okay, that's going to make it easier. And then we're going to update that. So BZ, we're going to update that. And then I'm going to as well update this CA to CZ2. That's where our results are going to show up. So all we need to do is just copy and paste that one more time inside that. So copy that. And then I'm going to paste it right in here. So our results are going to go here. Our criteria is going to go here. So I'm going to merge and center that so we can clearly see those that are results. That's where our results are going to come, merge and center. And then we'll drop this down if we're going to do some formatting here, bringing it down. And then here is going to be our criteria. So our criteria is going to go directly below that. So 
Again, coloring that here and then merge and center that here, that's going to be our criteria. Let's name that criteria, capitalize that. So our criteria is going to go here, teacher number, teacher ID, it's going to go all the way over here. Okay, good. So now that we've got that, let's continue on with the code that we have. So teachers and all the way to AM, we're going to clear the contents of that. So AM now, and also the last row is going to be A of our, based on our teacher's database. This is our teacher sheet. We're clearing out any possible results. The last row is four exit the sub A3 all the way to Z, again AC, advanced filter. We're running that advanced, we're going to run that advanced filter on our original data all the way to Z. We can exclude the full name. We're going to have those results come directly from BA in the criteria going to go all the way for, to BZ. So we were just focused on that BA to BZ. Our results are going to come directly in CA to CZ, CZ2. Okay. All right, unique equals true. Our last results row CA, that should hold up fine if it's less than three. Okay, N26, teacher range N26 through AJ. So that's, we need to update that, right, to AM. And last result 23, CA to CZ. Okay, there we go. That's going to bring in all the data. So let's run that code. Let's actually save it before we do anything else. Run that code, check to make sure it's looking good, and then go back into our teachers here and we've got everything here so again I'm gonna clear that out here and I'm gonna delete that and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assign that specific macro that we just created to this clear filter so clear filter I can assign it to the group assign macro here go down to teachers and then list and then clear the filter click OK clearing that filter out okay it's gonna do that it's gonna bring in all that data okay perfect so let's run the filtering now now all we need is create that filter so how do we do that this is the filtering code here so again the teacher shapes clear filter button that doesn't change so that's fine we're that already is gonna we're gonna show that last row last results row is fine and 26 through AM, we're gonna clear those contents out, making sure that we're already up to the AM here. All the way, I wanna clear those just as I did before. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're gonna set the last row based on A, we're gonna run. Now, A3 through Z, that's correct. All of the last bit, advanced filter, correct. We've done that, we've done our homework on that. That's looking good. Everything's good. So now all we need to do is do the on sheet code. Now we have that with students. Why don't we just copy that? The student list macros inside the student here, student sheet here, we're gonna focus on that right in here. Students, now that's gonna be based on change, right? So we have that here, but it's here. So basically we're focused right on here. So let's up copy that. If we make any changes to that, we can update that. All right, and it's right here. It's simple, on filter change. Okay, so let's copy that and put that directly into the teachers here. Teachers, and we're focused on the worksheet change here. So it's update, worksheet change, and we're going to base it on, of course, N25 all the way through AM if we make a change. Now let's figure out our date columns. We need to know which columns are date. They're handled differently. So let's take a look. What are our dates? We've got a birth date here. Uh, let's just do the, that's the formula of date. Okay, so our, our birthday, that's also formatted as date, nice. Equals column, let's, okay, so this column is 19, right? So we got 19's a date, I wanna handle those differently. We've got our start and end time might be our decimal, so they may be helpful as, as probably, let's do that too. So I wanna do 19, uh, 23, 24, I wanna handle those numerically. Uh, zip code is okay, 19, 23, 24, and let's take a look hire date and termination date those are all so let's remember those okay remember them together 19 uh okay good let's just go through them we'll, we'll write the code as we look at them so i want to make sure so we've got 19 i want to leave the dates are numerical so bringing this down here so we can look at both and bringing this up here so taking a look here 19 we've got here start time and end time so we'll do those 23 and 24 do those collectively 23 all the way down here let's go back where we are 23 and 24 I want to separate those those filtering those dates and numbers are handled a little bit differently so or 23 24 continuing on or what else right we also are going to have let's go go back down to not the phone numbers but we want the higher and the termination dates so the higher date 29 and 30 so let's put those in as well 29 and 30 okay so 29 and then the last one will be 30 or pasting that 30. So in those cases, those are all dates. I wanna handle those differently. I wanna handle them as double, right? C double, gonna take out that target column, 39, making sure that we're, we're right. We're right on the column difference. Why is that? Let's just take a look. If I make a change to this column right here, let's say equals 
column, right? If I make a change directly to column 14, and I want that change to be reflected directly inside the teacher's database, and I want to paste it right on the criteria, right? I want to equals column, right? I want to make that change. What's the column difference? 53. So if this is column 53, and we're making a change directly on column 14, we know the difference is 39. So that was correct. So it's still the same, just as we did with students. So 39 is the difference there. So we're good with that. So let's bring that up a little bit. 39, double target value equals C. This time, of course, it's not the student's database. We need to update that. So again, just to make sure, Control F, looking for student, changing it to teachers, just only on the selected test. And that's going to replace them all, replace all. Okay, it's going to replace five. Okay, good. So now it's going to be based on the teacher's database. All right, that looks good. Else, and then if it's a text value, we're going to put an asterisk before and after it so we can get a partial match. All right, let's take a look at that. Let's do a partial match here and add that in. I'm not there, sorry. Let's do a partial match here and then FF and then see if it goes. All right, take a look here in the teacher database. Obviously, we've got to clear out this when there's no teacher. We need to clear out any information here. We On clear filter, we'll probably run the clear filter here. Let's do that and clear the filter, making sure we get all the debug that. And then also target value. Obviously, this is if it's more the best way to handle this since we're adding clearing more than one is just to do this. If target because we're making changes to a lot of cells, target dot count large is greater than one. Actually, we don't want to do greater than one because why is that? Because there are when I make a change to this, <laughs> let's do let's make update this here. So let's do 15 or 20. Let's just do 20, then exit sub. I want to do large because I have a change here inside our teachers. We've got a lot of numbers here. Let's uh, update this. I want to reset that. And there we go. Okay, back to teachers, right? There's a lot of cells in here. E19 all the way through J22, right? We're focused on here six different columns, and we're going to be focused on four different rows. So we've got like 24 cells in there. So if we're going to focus on 24 different cells, right, we need to update that. So it's 24 cells that we're making a change in that. So keep that in mind. So if we're making a change to those 24, so we probably should change this to about 25. Okay, so then exit this up. So let's take a look at that back inside the teachers list here. And then clearing the filter out, that works nicely. Okay, so then let's go back in here. We're now making sure that our, our filter has now cleared out. And perfect, that's just what I want. Okay, so deleting that here, clearing that out, clear those filters out, making sure that everything's cleared, changing this to 120, making sure that we have it. All right, it works on dates, everything. Wow, what an incredible session we had today. We focused a lot. We built this entire uh, teacher session. We did the list. We did change orders. We did save, update. It was an incredible. We did the entire design. Amazing. It was about two hours. What an incredible training. I can't wait. Next week, I've got a brand new something very special. I hope you'll join us. Thank you all. If you do like this training, all I ask you to support us. Like, share this video comment below and of course we do have the amazing 175 pack of workbook templates you're gonna love that's my best work for over three years it's just 66 dollars. i hope you'll pick that up all right thanks so much and we'll see you next week